There is a new phenomenon in the coding industry called vibe coding. People have been going viral on X and other online platforms for building fully fledged software applications, often with zero coding background, simply by prompting AI over and over again until the app works. And some of these people are now making millions from these vibe coded applications. So we need to talk about this. What does this vibe coding and the ability to build entire monetizable applications simply using AI mean? for us as programmers and is this something that you can use and how should you use it to get ahead as a programmer and I think I am particularly in the position to talk about this because I am one of these people I built myself a fully fledged startup that has now made more than a hundred thousand dollars and a lot of it was using these vibe coding techniques and we especially need to talk about this because throughout this process of essentially vibe coding this startup that there is also let's just say a dark side to vibe coding that any programmer or anyone wanting to use it should absolutely be aware of. Before we start obviously if you want to become a vibe coder you still need to understand code. In this new AI driven world, it is true more than ever that those with real software engineering skills will stand out from the crowd because a lot of people are now taking the easy way of just using AI and neglecting really learning coding. So if you're interested in learning coding in a way that allows you to really understand software engineering, not just coding, but really software engineering and all the real world technical skills that you need to actually stand out in the real world. You can check out my program, Python Developer Bootcamp, down below in the description, where I teach you from zero to become a fully fledged Python full stack engineer with all the technical and non-technical skills needed to get hired in the industry in the age of AI. As a thank you for watching this video, you can use the code vibe coding for a full 15% off of the program. So that will be linked in the first link down below in the description. So first, what is vibe coding? So what vibe coding is, is essentially coding by relying entirely on AI. Obviously, when you're programming these days, if you're not using AI at all, that's kind of stupid. Like you should be using AI. It is so useful for programming. But vibe coding simply just takes it a step further where you don't do any coding yourself. You don't even review the code that the AI generates. You just simply blindly accept, accept, accept. And your entire development and coding workflow is just talking to AI and none of it is actually even looking at the code. It was made popular by this tweet over here, which I'm not going to read to you, by Andrew Karpathy, which describes very well what vibe coding is. And he says, there's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding, where you fully give into the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget the code even exists. It's possible because LLMs are getting too good. Also, I just talk to Composer with Super Whisper, so I barely even touch the keyboard. I ask for the dumbest things, like decrease the padding on the sidebar by half, because I'm too lazy to find it. I accept all always. I don't read the diffs anymore. When I get error messages, I just copy paste them with no comment. Usually that fixes it, but it's not really coding. I just see stuff, I say stuff, run stuff, and copy paste stuff, and it mostly works. And that is really the key with why I'm coding. Because whenever you use AI, most of the time it works. And whenever it doesn't work, you can just essentially tell AI to fix it and keep telling it until it works. And eventually, if you just keep doing that, it is eventually going to work. So then the question is, do you even need to code anymore when you can literally just vibe code everything? Well, the answer is yes, you absolutely still need to code and I will get to the drawbacks and the dangers of vibe coding later on in the video. But first, we need to talk about how to use vibe coding as effectively as possible to get ahead as a programmer. Because if you're not using this at all, you are at the risk of falling behind. So really the benefit of vibe coding is that it really speeds up what you can create. You no longer have to look at an empty code file and not know what to do, not know how to start. You can just tell AI to give you a starting point for whatever you want to make, and it is often going to be very, very good. So whenever you have a project idea, you can use AI to very quickly get the first version out, to get the MVP of your application, even to the point where you can start giving it to people. So if you're looking to build a startup, for example, this is really fantastic for you because you no longer have to spend weeks or months developing the first version of your application. You can get it done in as little as a day with these AI tools. And you can even give it to people and even often make money from it just using AI, which will allow you to see which projects have potential and which do not. This is really an opportunity 
that is absolutely game changing for us programmers and you need to take advantage of it. The second big benefit of Vibe Coding is that it allows you to focus on high level design. The way I work on my startup is I essentially treat the AI as like almost an intern developer or even almost like a junior developer, where my only task is now is to focus on the higher level infrastructure, to focus on deciding what code to write rather than spending the time to actually write it. And there's now even AI tools like Warp or like Devin, where you can set up multiple instances of these AI agents to work for you at the same time and have an AI coder, an AI programmer behind the scenes actually implementing the code. And the fourth benefit, and this is especially relevant for those of you who are looking to get your foot in the door in the industry, is it can allow you to build those portfolio projects to put on your resume much, much faster. Your biggest roadblock between you and your first job is going to be the projects that you haven't yet built that you need to put on your portfolio to show to an employer that you know how to code. And crucially, these portfolio projects should be a bit more complicated than like a to-do app or something like that, but they don't have to be insanely complex or anything like that. And often these are prime targets for a vibe coded project where you can just let AI build these applications that are very much good enough to be portfolio applications, to be resume applications that you can put on your resume and then be able to apply for jobs and get interviews. Obviously to then pass those interviews, you would need to have the skills. You would often need to know things like lead code. You would need to understand data structure and algorithms, which you will have to learn and actually understand. By the way, if you're looking for the most efficient way the most targeted way to learn the instructional algorithms, to learn how to pass these technical interviews. I also created a program specifically targeted at helping you learn these topics just enough to pass the interviews as fast as possible. It's called Algo University. You can check that out in the second link down below in the description. So this is the benefits of Vibe Coding and why every programmer should use it to some extent to get ahead in the industry, whether you're looking to build a startup or get a job. But now we need to talk about the downside, the real dangers of Vibe Coding. The first is that when you Vibe Code too much, you lose context and you lose critical understanding of your project. So when you're just blindly accepting the code suggestions from the AI, in the beginning, it can be fine because anytime you need to understand something, you can just go read the code. But eventually, when your project gets very big, you can get to the point where you don't even understand your own code. And when eventually AI gets to the point, we can no longer do what you want, it gets a bit too big or it's doing something wrong, it can take a lot of time for you to go in there and understand the code because from the beginning, AI has been building it for you. You don't even understand the context of your entire project. And that can become very dangerous when you have those 1% or 5% of changes that you actually have to do as a human. Because by the way, as much as AI can do like 95 or even 99% of the coding for you, there are times where you as the human need to go in and plug in the holes that AI leaves you. When AI gets into a loop, it cannot really do exactly what you're looking for. And it can be very dangerous if through coding AI, you don't also keep in mind to always understand how the code is structured, how the project is architected, everything like that. And it can end up taking more time than if you just build it by hand from scratch from the get go. The second danger is what I call technical debt. So technical debt is in the industry what we call a situation where you have a very bad code, where you as the developer simply keep following this bad architecture because in the short term, it's just easier to build on top of this bad architecture rather than completely refactor the code or reformat the architecture. And with AI, this can often happen because the code that AI will often write is not going to be the most optimal. I found that AI is not very good at understanding software design principles, things like that, which again are not very important when you're building something simple like a portfolio project. But when you're building a real monetizable application and you want to scale it, you really want to build this into a big thing eventually it becomes a problem. And again, if you haven't put that effort from the beginning to make sure that your software is designed well, that is going to lead into a lot of problems later on, especially if you need to hire a team, things like that. It can be very slow and difficult for your team to work on your architecture to improve your application if the code is formatted and architected really badly. Danger number three is loss of skills. So a friend of mine was doing a mock interview 
for a senior engineer, where to his shock, he found that this senior, the senior engineer, couldn't even write a for loop in his most used programming language. And he was like, how can this be? How can you be a senior engineer and not even know how to write a for loop? Well, it's because this engineer had relied on AI so much that he had lost even the ability to write the most basic code himself. Now again, sure, when you're vibe coding, most of the time you don't need to write the code, that's kind of the point. But again, there are points when you have to do that. You still need to have these skills as a developer. And when you rely on AI so much that it simply does everything for you, you don't pay any attention to the code, you will lose these even most basic coding skills, which can make you look like an idiot in a situation where you actually need them. And the next danger, which is pretty the biggest one that there's been a lot of drama about online, and that is security. AI is very good at building things that work. But when you're building something serious, it's not enough for the code to work. It also has to be secure. There's been a lot of situations online of people vibe coding applications with zero coding background and then getting hundreds of or even thousands of users only to find out that someone figures out a very simple security hole in their application because the AI had never built the application in a secure way. So you don't want this to be you. So if you are vibe coding applications, again, make sure to keep an eye on the code. You make sure to take the time to learn and understand how to build an architect a secure application, especially if you're dealing with sensitive data in your application. This is not a joke. This is very, very important. And AI is not very good at it. With AI in general, you want to treat it as like an intern, as a junior developer with no understanding of these higher level things like software design, security, all these kinds of things. And when you treat it like that, it can work very, very well. And just like a senior engineer needs to keep an eye on an intern. You can't just let an intern build everything for you and not even look at the code that they write. You wouldn't do that. That would be stupid because the intern obviously doesn't understand all of these higher level topics of programming. You as the human cannot just let AI do everything for you and expect it to not be problems, which is why like I said in the beginning of the video, in the age of vibe coding, it is more important than ever for you to really understand software. AI is fantastic because it allows you to not have to spend time hand coding stuff, like spending your time like typing on your computer like a monkey. You can spend your time just understanding the high level stuff, like how to design applications in a smart way, how to design your application from a user's perspective, how to create secure software, how to create great software, not just some code that kind of works. And when you treat AI like this, with this understanding in mind, vibe coding and using AI to code is a fantastic thing that will make all of our lives as programmers easier. But this is exactly why it will never replace a human because AI cannot have this high level understanding. You as the human will always need to keep an eye on this. And as, and as long as you remember to do that, you can use vibe coding safely. Now, if you want to hear my story of how I built my startup that has now made more than $100,000, you can watch this video right here. So watch that video next and I will see you on the next one.